Hello everybody and welcome. What you see here is the secret BFR test footage SpaceX does not want you to see yet. The assembled spaceship stands tall at 118 meters on the launch pad and will now take off for its maiden flight. If SpaceX were to use Kerbal Space Program to prototype their vehicles, no, this is of course my own creation of the spaceship and booster combination SpaceX has first presented in 2016 and which received a few changes since then. Of course, many of you may have already watched the announcement where the first passenger for a trip around the moon, Yusako Maizawa, was presented to the public. During the event, SpaceX mastermind Elon Musk gave us a lot of new info about the BFR. But there are still many questions open and I'm going to address 10 of them here while this majestic beast rises up from Kerbin. First up, what will the finished BFR look like? We now had the third iteration, at least in public, of the BFR short for Big Falcon Rocket and the BFS or Big Falcon Spaceship. But this is by no means a guarantee that the final vehicle will look like this. Back in 2016, when it was still called Interplanetary Transport System, or ITS, it was proposed to be 122 meters tall. A year later, Elon Musk presented an updated version standing 106 meters tall. Now we are back at 118 meters. Also, the wing configuration, if you can call it that, has changed due to the new way of slowing the spaceship down in the atmosphere. More on that later. In the Q&A, Elon Musk called this the final iteration in regards to broad architectural decisions. But how it will look like in the end is still very much an open question. Speaking of looks, what will the interior be like? If SpaceX will follow the design language it has used for the Dragon capsule, the interior of the BFS will look like something straight out of a science fiction film. SpaceX uses a very distinct design language utilizing sleek surfaces and monochrome color palette, which is just a fancy way of saying black and white. It also appears to follow a reduced to the max kind of design similar to what Tesla, Elon Musk's electric car company, did with the interior of the Model 3. While anybody's guess is as good as mine at this point in time, I believe the Crew Dragon can be taken as a good starting point when thinking about the BFS interior. Apparently there will be different configurations, some with more cargo space, some with more passenger space. But as with the exterior, we do not really know yet. While we watch my attempt to land the booster, where is the BFR booster going to land? If you remember last year's presentation, SpaceX showed us a vision of Earth-to-Earth -Earth transportation where one could travel from London to Hong Kong in 30 minutes using the BFR. Now, wouldn't it make sense to save fuel on the booster and not let it return to the point of origin, but let it land at another spaceport? If there was a global BFR Earth-to-Earth -Earth network in place, they could launch from New York, send the spaceship to Tokyo, but let the booster land halfway, sort of, in LA. I just hope they will stick the landing better than I did the first couple of times around. Again! Again. In the end I finally made it, but this was a lot harder than with other reusable launch vehicles I have constructed in the past. What you can see here is a tanker. It looks the same as the human rated BFS, but is in fact remote controlled. Now, in both the 2016 ITS reveal and the 2017 BFR presentation, Elon Musk showed us a tanker vehicle that would refuel the BFS in orbit in order for it to make the long burn and powered landing on Mars. This leads to question number 4. What's up with the tanker? While the 2018 announcement was of course focused on the lunar flyby mission with billionaire Yusaku Maizawa and the so far unannounced artists he wants to take along, there was no mention of the tanker we heard so much about one and two years ago. One might assume it will look similar to the BFS since the previous iterations also did, but there is no confirmation yet. And this leads me to my next question. How will the BFS dock to other vehicles? The 2016 ITS variant envisioned docking ports on the side of the spaceship and the tanker. The 2017 BFR concept presented us with the idea of the spaceship and tanker docking aft to aft. 
Maybe some obscure Requiem for a Dream reference? Anyhow, we didn't hear about any update on that this time around, but the large two-scale diagram of the BFS's aft section didn't show any docking ports. So the question will remain, how SpaceX intends to dock the spaceship to other vehicles or space stations? And yeah, SpaceX said they will use some weird wingsuit-inspired mechanism where two of the rear fins will act as flaps to slow this ship down during descent. Again. I wasn't able to even remotely get this to work in stock KSP. Again. And I really have no good grasp of aerodynamics, but you can look up what Scott Manley did with it and I think everyday astronaut also tried to emulate this as well. Me, I failed miserably, so I had to resort to cheating, and even then it was hard to get this thing to land safely. Now, while we see this BFS replica make its way to Kerbin's moon Moon, let's talk about another big question that was not addressed this time. How will astronauts and passengers be protected? I'm not talking about air, food and water or meteorites. No, one of the hazards of space travel, especially when going interplanetary, is radiation. The relatively short journey to the moon will only take a few days, so the exposure won't be that bad. But if SpaceX wants to send the BFS to Mars, as Elon Musk has repeatedly stated, they need to protect the crew. I remember Elon claiming during the ITS reveal that the spaceship would be so massive that they would point the rear to the sun and shield the crew from radiation that way. However, cosmic radiation coming from the rest of the galaxy would be arriving from any direction. So the question remains, how is SpaceX planning on protecting the crew from these rays for the months they travel to Mars and back? Again! Now, while we are transporting this thing back away from the moon and then switch to another mission going to Duna from Kerbin orbit, let's talk about another way of transporting. How will SpaceX transport the BFR? What I mean by that is the launch site will probably be at Kennedy Space Center in Florida. The booster and spaceship, however, will be built at a seaside facility in Los Angeles. Since the rocket will be 9 meters in diameter, it won't fit under bridges and definitely not through tunnels, so transporting across land is out of the question. But we already have an answer for this. In an article from April 19th, the LA Times cites Bruce McHugh, director of construction and real estate at SpaceX, saying that the BFR and BFS would have to be transported by barge through the Panama Canal to Florida. If you're interested in this, I recommend you watch a video Primal Space did on that topic and also compares this to how the gigantic Saturn V was transported back in the 1960s. Back to the wings or flaps. What I couldn't discern from the 2018 presentation was this. Will the skydiving airbrake technique work on Mars? We all know that Mars does indeed have an atmosphere, however, it averages only 0.6% of Earth's mean sea level pressure. So the question is, how will this affect the plan to reduce velocity using the rear wings or flaps? So far the ITS and BFS 2017 were slated for powered landings on Mars. Will this be a bit different with the new BFS going forward? We don't know yet. What I do know is that I can't do the wing thing with my design, so I opted for the classic direct descent path. And it worked out fine. Now, while we're now watching me deploy the outer cargo elements and drills for research mining and refueling, let's talk about exactly this process. How will the BFS unload cargo and crew? The addition of cargo attached to the bottom of the spaceship is familiar to how the so-called trunk works in SpaceX's Dragon cargo transporter. It would be easy to detach from the ground, but since it probably will be unpressurized, I doubt that the crew could disembark the way our little Kerbal does here in this video. How would they get cargo of the supposedly 1000 cubic meter pressurized space inside the spaceship? One would assume that the rear half of the spaceship will consist of fuel tanks and engines. So when this 55 meter tall thing is landed, the pressurized cabin and cargo area are more than 20 meters above the surface. That's way too high for a ladder to be safe when wearing a spacesuit. Also, the new design will rest higher above the ground, as you can see in this updated render of a Mars base vision. Will there be a crane? A giant ramp? We don't know yet. 
While we now see my BFS replica make its way back home, let's talk about the one question even SpaceX cannot answer sufficiently at this point in time. When will the BFR and BFS be really finished? During the private passenger announcement, Elon Musk said they wanted to do so-called hopper flights with the spaceship part in 2019 at their Texas facility. This means that SpaceX will send the BFS a few miles up into the atmosphere and then land it back on the ground. Hopefully in one piece, since this will be quite an expensive piece of machinery. But so far the only pieces of the BFS we have seen are a hull segment, a fuel tank, both made of carbon fiber, and a Raptor engine in development. I can imagine SpaceX keeps security tight around this project, so this is all we have at the moment. The company has missed the deadlines in the past, so any claims on when they will launch the BFR have to be taken with a grain of salt. But I would imagine we will see results in the next 3 to 5 years. One thing is certain, we are seeing reinvigorated interest in space travel and with other players like Blue Origin and their upcoming new Glenn reusable vehicle or United Launch Alliance working on the Vulcan Center which is partly reusable as well as NASA's SLS, if it still is being built that is, we have a lot of exciting new things coming in the next few years. Again! Again. Will we see a moon base in our lifetime? Or even humans landing on Mars? I am still hoping for both. Again. And a few decades on my clock so that I will be able to see it. Until then, I keep on building spaceships and other rocket stuff in Kerbal Space Program. I hope you will continue to be entertained by this. If you are, please like and share this video and subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.